last class we I taught some of the the letters and or you want to call them alphabets I taught some of those and we talked about the the way you say say them the morphology and the phonology of the language and the speaking through your nose your nasal and through your throat your esophagus and through your lungs right how you ha have your aspirated sounds some people have other languages they speak three languages and I, i'm very you know proud of them when they do that because you know it takes a lot out of your mind and your mouth to speak a language some people feel that they can't say certain words letters but with practice it does come out in the way that it should but it does take practice okay so again the vowels nasal vowels and consonants we have five vowels a e i o and u and three nasal vowels and again we say it through our nose like it's a plugged nose and it's nasalized sounds mm, with our nose mm, and we say un, un, un. so the n is when we write it it has a little tail at the bottom of the n and like i said before at last class you write the words how you feel that you think you will understand okay and for some of us we have our 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 um language our alphabets we know the long e long i short short a that's how we understand it and that's good and write it how you feel that you will understand it so again the dakota letter is a but sounds like the a and father a fa a a b as in boy b b b c as in chore ch ch chore and we have the c it's um the way it is and or it sounds like exploded ch 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 and that's how you can write it as um uh exploded and you put a little asterisk above it again i had a, a dakota font on my old computer my old laptop this is a new laptop so i haven't downloaded um uh, the alphabet the dakota alphabet on my the fonts on this laptop so hopefully next week i can do that uh the d is the way we, it sounds like it is in day d d d e is the way it sounds in they a a g sounds like the g in give g g g this g with the asterisk it has a guttural sound and it sounds like the g in wanahi 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 the g has a guttural sound on it and wanahi uh is a dakota word h sounds like the h in hello hello ha 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 and the other h with the asterisk is aspirated when i say aspirated it's, it sounds like it's coming out of your your lungs your chest hota it comes out of your esophagus ho 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 hota and i sounds like the i in machine and it's a long i e e e e and the k it sounds like the k in kite k k k the k with the asterisk is exploded and it comes from your esophagus again one not k k k mm. the m sounds like the m in mouse m m m and the n sounds like the n in new n n n the other n is the nasalized n 
I had said that's the one that has a little tail at the end. So when you say nasal eyes, it comes up from your nose, right? So it's uh, na, g, g, e. That's the n. So it comes out of your your nose. Na, g, e, or the n in ink, 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 ink. So a lot of us we know the English. We can say the English. Um, the coda letter, but we don't realize it, right? So again, the O is in the way it sounds in go. O, O, O. P as in party. P, 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 P. The P with the asterisk is the exploded P as in P, 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 P. Mm, or it can be like the P in the, the um, English word pow. Ha, ha, ha. The S is like the S in C. S, S, S. And the S with the asterisk is aspirated. It's sha, sh, sh. Or like the SH in shower. Sh. So it just comes through your teeth. So shh, shh. the T in sounds like the T in town. Ta, ta, ta. The T with the asterisk is exploded. So it's ta, 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 ta. So again, it comes from your esophagus, however you say it. <clears throat> so you pay attention to how it comes from your esophagus to your teeth when it comes through your teeth. The U, it sounds like the, the O-O and choose. So it's ooh, ooh, ooh. Sounds like long O's. The W sounds like the W and warn. Wah, wah, wah. And the Y sounds like Y and yellow. Yeah, 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 yeah. The Z. Sounds like the Z in zebra. Z, 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 Z. And the Z with the asterisk sounds like the Z in azir. Azir, zir, zir, zir. So now when you have time, you can go over those alphabets too and practice them, right? A lot of people always laugh at themselves when they go over the letters because it's it sounds funny. It feels funny in your throat. It feels funny in your nose, right? Then when you're you're saying the aspirated ones too, you end up holding your throat or finding somewhere where you feel it. A lot of people have a hard time. If they have no teeth, they, the words come out different too, right? So pay attention to that when you're speaking or listening to somebody who's speaking the Lakota language, Dakota language, Nakota language, pay attention to all that. So we have 26 continent, consonants. <clears throat> and the marks above the lettering can mean a guttural sound or explosive sound. And the N at the end, it has a tail. I should have wrote that in there. Um, Men and women have different endings. That's in a statement or a sentence. The men usually have do at the end, D-O, do. And the women at the end, they say ye, ye, ye. So when you listen to conversations, um, I don't know if there's going to be a second part to this Dakota language. There, That's where I would teach you is how to say sentences, do connecting sentences. And um, for me doing that, there would be a man teaching the men and the women teaching the women. Because in our Dakota, Lakota, Nakota language, we have the men who do different things. The women do different things. We're not together. We say our language separately too. And <clears throat> I asked why before. But they told me that don't ask questions. Oh, okay. I said, so I just I just left it at that. In our culture, we're told not to be doing that. So that's why I listen. Okay. And we went over kinship and tiwahe. 
And Mitakuye is our, our immediate family. We always hear people saying Mitakuye Owasin. Mitakuye is immediate family and Owasin means everybody. Mitakuye Owasin. So that's all my relatives, right? Again, we went over the, <clears throat> the Tiwahe, a man is Wichasha. Wichasha. The woman is Wia. 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 The child is Sich Etch A. Sich Etch A. Sich Etch A. Again, there's another word for that. We say Wakaija. 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 A boy is Hokshida, Hokshida, Hokshida. The girl is Wichinchana, Wichinchana, Wichinchana. Something that, that's female, it will always have the W I N, the we at the beginning, or else if somebody has their name, the we is at the end, so it, it identifies as a female. And when you pay attention to that, because they talk about the moon too and different things, that means that it's female. It identifies as something as a female. So we went on to the older grandparents. Some people, a long time ago, we had generations. There was five generations that were living. So the older grandparents, or Kunshi, that would be like the great grandmother, right? The Kunshi, or to be like a really older, older lady. And Tukashi is grandfather. You always hear people when they pray, they say Tukashila, Tukashida. That means grandfather. That's in prayer, though. The immediate grandparents. Like my grandma and my grandfather, it would be Unchi for grandmother. Unchi, Unchi. Grandfather is Unka, Unka, Unka. There's that nasalized N again, Unka. Okay. And your father is Ate, Ate, Ate. There's that E that sounds like an A, right? At A, at A, at A. In university, I would tell people, remember father as eight, right? I used to give them little techniques of how to, how to remember the, the Dakota language and compare it to the English language. Um, there's a little bell. What is that noise? And... Oh, sorry, Maureen. No, sorry. That's just someone coming in. Oh, somebody rang the doorbell. And the mother, the mother is Ina. Ina. The I is a long I. So Ina. So you would write it for yourself to understand is E E N A Ina. Then you can put them into syllables too when you're trying to remember the language. You could put them into syllables and write them the way that you would remember and write them the way that it's written on here. But then, again, if you have this, you can print it out and use it as your own if you have access to a printer. Uh, the boys, they come in birth order. They always talked about how children were given names when they were born. Uh, they were, they were recognized as being uh, very sacred children. So children were given a, a name as soon as they were born. So these are how they're in birth order. My children, I have a grandson from my, my son. He, he's the firstborn son. I call him Cheske because he's the firstborn son. My other, my other son has his oldest daughter. Her name is Winona. We call her Winona. And for some reason, they respond better to their Dakota birth order names than their English names. 
So the boys is Cheske, Papa, Happy, Chata, Hake. The girls is Winona, Hap, Hap E, Hapsti, Wanske, We Hake, We Hake. Okay. And again, last last week we went over uh, counting from one to ten. So I said for next class, for people to come back and do a little bit of sentencing, structuring with the numbers, the family, and colors. So we counted one to ten, Woyawa. Wancha, Numpa, Yamani, Dopa, Zapta, Shakpe, Shakawi, Shakdora, Napjuanka, Wikjamina. So if anybody practiced or anything all week and if they, they feel brave enough to go over the one to ten. Right now, does anybody want to volunteer? Anybody? Like Shalena or Janine? <laughs> um, I'll count. Okay. Okay. Uh, Wancha, Numpa, Yamini, Dopa, Zapta, Shakpe, Shakoni, Shagdoha, Napchuanka, Bikchemna. Yes, you did it. Thank you, Shalena. So now, oh, what did I do? So now we will go over the colors. The colors, we talked about those. Oapi talked about that with um, our elder we had last class, Harold. He had mentioned <clears throat> that some of the colors that they say in their, their region, their territory in Sioux Valley are different from what we say over here. Um, I have relatives in Fort Houghton. I have relatives um, in Chinupawakba, and some are similar. And that's why I say to listen when you hear people talking from other regions. And I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying it. Every territory has their their language, right? So I wanted to add what Harold had said out of respect, add it to our color chart here, just to let you know, because I know some of you are from different territories on here tonight. And again, out of respect, I just want to recognize that. Okay. So for us, we say red is shah, shah. Sha. The S is a SH. So you want if you want to write that down, you can write that down. And so you'll understand it. Um yellow is Z Z. Z, uh, orange is Z sha, Z sha, and you can put it S as S H Z sha. Sioux Valley, uh, Harold had mentioned they say Riri Tonka, so. I think that was supposed to be meant for a fruit. 
So I think I'll write that with the fruit as well. But we say orange as zisha. And for blue, it's to. 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 Again, some people write it um, different. They put T um, T H O to. And uh, pejito is green. Pejito, pejito. Sapa is black. Sapa, sapa, sapa. White is ska. Ska, ska. Gray is hota, hota, hota. Again, this is the H that you're going to use aspirated. It's coming from your esophagus. Hota. And brown is khi, khi, khi. So the G is actually a guttural aspirated sound. Khi, khi. Purple is shashta, 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 shashta. And Sioux Valley is recognizing purple as toshta, 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 toshta. Pink is shasha. Sha sha, so you can write s h, s h sha sha, sha sha. Again, Sioux Valley, you recognize it as richta, richta, richta. So when you hear um, people talk in that region, you can listen for that. Pay attention to that and recognize it. Um, so I want to go over this. If anybody wants to volunteer to say that. Anybody feel brave enough? No? The colors? Yeah, okay. yeah say the colors. I'll give it a go. <laughs> okay. Okay, so um, colors, Owapi. The uh, red is sha, z is yellow, z sha is orange, to is blue, pejito mm -hmm. is green, sapa, ska, hota, ri, uh, shasta, and I forgot how to say it last time. Sha sha. I just don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> Shasha. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's good. So now, recognizing those colors, those are the basic colors. Okay. It's good that we know the basic colors because we can use them to create light sentences. Last week, I talked about people who spoke the Dakota language or any other language with English. It's considered a blended language. So now when you speak another language with English, that's called a blended language. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. That's at least you understand some language words, and that's okay. That's really good. So we talked about... Um, that and we talked about the numbers right for the numbers we can say uh which hasha nupa ri so which hasha is um man nupa is two ri is brown so now when you're going to talk about something identify the first thing so when we talk about uh, a sentence structure 
it consists of one main um, identify something as a noun, right? So when we talk about the subject, it's a person or thing being talked about. So we want to identify something that we're talking about our subject. So the subject is wichasha, we'll use as an example. And we wanna say um, there's wichasha and there's numpa too. And what are they? They're, they're brown, they're ghi, right? Wichasha numpa ghi. So that's a simple sentence that we can create. Um, you're married, you can say my wichasha, or else you can say, I have numpa dogs. So that's two dogs. My um, my eyes are ri, they're brown. So you create little sentences like that for yourself. And if you have somebody that you can discuss that with, talk with them, practice, that really helps. Okay, that's the beginning. And that's really good. A lot of people feel shy, but then, you know, that's the beginning of speaking the language and keeping that language within yourself how you will understand it better and how you will recognize it when speaking with somebody that you're practicing with. You'll feel comfortable when you go to powwows or anywhere where they're speaking a language, the Dakota language, Lakota, Nakota, because there's just three, there's three dialects, but they're different, right? They have similarities. So you have to listen. And like I said, there's no wrong way to write it. And if you listen and you practice, it'll come out properly, okay? So in our sentences, I um, we talk about um, the verb that comes after the, the subject, right? The verb is what expresses the subject. That means the color or the action of the the subject. So again, you practice that. <clears throat> and you'll have fun. Okay. Does anybody want to try what I talked about, the blended language or anything? I don't know why we're talking about that last class. Anybody write down anything? Oh, you guys were too busy. <laughs> it's okay. So We'll go on. We'll talk about the Ampetu Shakawi. Shakawi is seven. Ampetu is day. Okay. Ampetu Shakawi. Ampetu Shakawi. Ampetu Shakawi. <clears throat> so. The Dakota word is Ampeto Shikawi. The literal translation, when you translate the Dakota to English, is day seven. And the English is seven days. Okay. So when you start learning Dakota, you can write it in three columns. You put the Dakota word or the English, whichever way you want to write it. And a literal translation is how it sounds in Dakota. And then the English translation, how it's understood. In the literal translation, you can write your Dakota and you can write how you understand it. But write the Dakota way it's written and the way you understand it. When you document little things like this, when I was picking up extra extra words, I would always have a little book and I would always write down little things in there. So I go back, now I have like 20, 30 little books, all the Dakota little words in there that I, I found. So I go over them and that's been a long time I've been doing that. So the Dakota word for Saturday is Mpetu Owanka Yujajapi. Mpetu Owanka Yujajapi. 
Empetu Owanka Yujajapi. The literal translation is day floors wash. The English word is Saturday. This, this word, Empetu Owanka Yujajapi, uh, I asked my auntie and my mom about it one time, and I still ask elders, like, why is it called that? And they said it's because a long time ago, that's what they used to do on Saturdays. It was meant because a long time ago, we never had days of the week, right? Back in the TP days, we never had days of the week. But what we did learn, start making our days because we followed the, the calendar, right? So that's wash the floor days on Saturday. So the next day is Mpetu Wakan, Mpetu Wakan, Mpetu Wakan. Waka means holy, okay, or something sacred. We talk about Sunday, because that's what it means. It means Sunday, Mpetu Wakan, Mpetu Wakan. There's that, that guttural K and a nasal N. Again, that followed the calendar day and Sundays were meant to go to church, right? So that's that's a holy day. Mpetu Wanji, Mpetu Wanji, Mpetu Wanji. It's day first, right? Or day one. And that's Monday. Okay. Mpetu Waji. The next one is Mpeto Inumpa. Mpeto Inumpa. Mpeto Inumpa. Day two. It's the second day. It's Tuesday, right? And the I E, the I that's put in front of the letter, the word, the number, means it's the next day. It's after. So it's after, Inupa is after Wanji. Mpetu Wanji, Mpetu Inupa. That means it's after. Mpetu Inupa. So we go back to our numbers. Nupa is number two, right? The next one is Mpetu in Iyamani. Iyamani. Mpetu Iyamani. Mpetu Iyamani. Mpetu Iyamani. Remember, our numbers is three, day three, and that's Wednesday, okay? So, Iyamani is three. Remember, Iyamani is three. Mpeto Iyamani, day three, Wednesday. So, next one is Mpeto Itopa. Mpeto Itopa. Mpeto Itopa. Mpeto Itopa. Day four. And it's Thursday, right? It's Thursday, Mpeto Itopa. The next day is Mpeto Izapta. Mpeto Izapta. Mpeto Izapta. Zapta is five, right? In our in our numbers. So it's day five and it's Friday. Okay. So Mpeto Shikawi. Mpetu Owanka Yujaja B. Mpetu Wakan. Mpetu Wanji. Mpetu Inumpa. Mpetu Iyamani. Mpetu Itopa. Mpetu Izapta. Okay? So I want to ask you, what day is it today? Who wants to respond to what day it is today? Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. So today, mm -hmm. today is Mpetu Inupa. Yeah. What was yesterday? Mpetu Wanji. Yeah. And tomorrow? Mpetu Iyamni. Yes, it is. Thank you. Okay. 
So I want you to remember these days of the week, go over them, say them this for this whole week until next Monday or next Tuesday. And I want to do one more before we're done tonight, okay? I don't want to feel like I'm rushing you or anything, but I want to do one more, just one more. Some of these we have are animals. There's not a whole bunch of animals, but just enough to know and to do with your colors. How do you say Friday again? It is, okay. Empetu izapta, izapta, empetu izapta. The I sounds like a long E, remember? Izapta, empetu izaptan. So the N has a little tail, it comes from your nose, nasalized N. Empetu izapta. The N in empetu is nasalized to empetu izapta. Empetu izapta. Okay, so that's Friday. Friday. So again, we're going to go over these animals. When we do our animals, this is when I was talking about the um, the language when we could use our English words along with our animals in Dakota. When we talk about our animals, our, our, our common animals that we see and hear, and I added fish in there too. And um, I was going to add in a snake, but that would have been too much. That, that's, that's a long one. Uh, so I added in mouse. So I added in pictures. So when we talk about our animals, we don't add a S when we want more. We don't make it to make it plural. We don't add a S or an E D, right? We don't say tatankas. Okay. So uh, as I go on to show you these words, I will show you how to make them plural as well. Okay. So the first one is tatanka. And that's buffalo, tatanka. The second one is shunka, shunka, shunka. So when you're writing it to, for yourself to remember, put a sh for shunka, shunka, and that's dog. Horse is similar to shunka waka. It's Shunka Waka. And remember in days of the week, we have Sunday, right? Sunday we have um, Empetu Waka, holy, remember? So again, dog is, I mean, horse is Shunka Waka. That means um, a sacred dog, a holy dog, right? Because a long time ago, our... Um, in the TP days, I guess they would call it, um, dogs, they, they didn't know how to say horse. Like they never had horses before. And I guess they just called them Shunka Waka because it was something great. And it was a big horse. So it should have been Shunka Tatanka or something, but no, it's Shunka Waka. And that's horse. Okay. So deer, this one, you have to have, um, it's a guttural. It's an aspirated H and a C. And I'll say it in syllables. Ta, cha, ta, cha. So T A is ta, C A is C H A, cha, ta, cha. The H is guttural. Ta, cha, ta, cha. So make sure you don't have a dry throat when you're saying these because it'll come out differently and it's okay to say it while I'm saying it too while you're offline and I don't hear you. That's fine. Tach-cha. Tach-cha. 
Okay. And mouse is he tunkana, he tunkana, he tunkana. So I'll say it in syllables. He tunkana, he tunkana, he tunkana. Okay, so there's lots of aspirations, guttural sounds, and nasalized sounds in there. One of the ends are nasalized. He tunkana. He tunkana. He tunkana. Okay. Rabbit is mastincha. 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 So the C is ch, ch, mas, din, ch, ch, ha, mas, din, cha. And bear is mato, 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 mato. The eagle, we say wambadi, wambadi, wambadi. Wambadi. <clears throat> the fish is hunga. Hunga. The Z is a guttural sound. Hunga. Sound. Hunga. Hunga. So all week you could practice all the aspirated sounds, the guttural sounds, the nasal sounds. Once you get used to that, the words will come up more better. It'll help you. Um, anybody want to practice? We have five minutes. No? Um, I will. Okay. I, I, sorry for the background noise if you hear it. Uh, tatanka, shunka, shunka laka, tach. Ja, he tunkana, mashtincha, mato, wambdi, and ho ran. Wash day. Wash day means good. Um, when I was growing up, some of these were our nicknames for our, our my little childhood friends. Call each other. Um, Tatanka, or we'd call each other Mastincha, or Hitunkana, Hora, you know, we'll call each other that. Or if you have pets, call them that so it'll be easier for you to say them too. Again, you can talk about um, the pictures. If you see a picture, look at it. If it's like this one is fish, Hora Zapta, there's five fish, Hora Zapta. Right? Uh, Wambadi Numpa. Wambadi Numpa. There's two eagles. Mastincha Ri. Mastincha Ri. A brown rabbit. You could put Mastincha Ri Waji. One brown rabbit. Tachcha. Uh, Tachcha. Numpa Ri. Two brown deer. Uh, Mastincha Skawaji. No. Mastincha Ri Waji. One brown rabbit, right? Maureen, there's another question in the chat. Uh, is okay. there a word for cat? Ichmu, the like word for cat is ichmu, I G M U, ichmu, ichmu. Mm -hmm. Then again, we have um, our hitunkhana, hitunkhana skau waji, hitunkhana skau waji, one white rat, one white mouse. Okay. So now I talked about how you would not add a S to pluralize the animals. 
or pluralize anything. And tatanka, tatanka waji, tatanka nupa. You have to add a number behind what you're trying to pluralize. Okay, and we do have a, a word for all. So if we talk about the Tatanka, we'll say, I see, I see Tatanka Owasan. Owasan is all. Okay. But if you see one or two or three or four or five, then you could use your, your Dakota numbers to add, to add, to pluralize something. Okay. So don't add a S or an ED. Okay. And it's almost eight o'clock. So anybody have any questions? You have a minute. <laughs> so you guys have this to think about counting and your colors and your animals and your days of the week. So try practice those and we'll go over those next week. Okay. I want to thank you all for being with me tonight on here and with the Regina Public Library and the Reconciliation to help us keep this language alive and revive, okay? And practice, practice more and thank you. All right. Thanks, Maureen. Uh, thank you for sharing okay. your knowledge. Have a great night, everyone. Okay. Okay. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.